All right, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. This was a movie that derailed what could have been an otherwise lucrative franchise. And it's really unfortunate because the production quality of this movie, it's great. It's fantastic. Visually, everything looks amazing. Uh, but what really hurts, and the acting too, the acting's great, the music's great. Uh, but what really hurts the narrative is all the little subplots pushing the main storyline into the background. They overshadow the main plot with all these little subplots. And, you know, you have the... The wedding thing, Reed and Sue, they're prepping for their wedding. Uh, they're, the government's also, I mean, the city, the government, or whatever, they're also coming down on them about uh, property destruction. They're being charged for that type of stuff. Uh, you have, you know, the fact that they're celebrities, they're in the public eye, uh, the pressure of all that. You have the government following what's essentially the main plot. They're following this thing that's going around the planet uh, causing environmental changes drastically in its wake and all, all encounters previously had led to the destruction of other worlds. Uh, while that's going on, you've got Reed and Sue planning their wedding doing their wedding stuff until that's essentially ruined by what the main plot should have been. And other things in here, like after the wedding gets ruined by what's the main storyline, the Silver Surfer, what they should have been following, um, Johnny goes after him, an encounter with him causes this power swapping subplot <clears throat> and that itself leads to, you know, Reed and Sue talking about retiring from the Fantastic Four. So that starts another subplot where Johnny and Thing are worried that the Fantastic Four is over. It's done. And you have them fail to get the fan, uh, fail to stop the Silver Surfer the first time they're working with the government. And then you bring in Dr. Doom, who's essentially got his own agenda, and that's a whole nother plot right there. And his his own agenda is to acquire the power of the Surfer and make the Fantastic Four look bad in the process. So when it comes to capturing the Surfer, the Fantastic Four get apprehended, the Surfer gets captured, and then Doom reveals himself for what he really is, uh, out for himself. He acquires the power of the Surfer, the Borg. And Thing sums this up himself in the storyline uh, with a, a single word of dialogue. So the writers, the writers were aware that they overcrowded this story. The Thing said something to like, to the effect of. Okay, we got this going on, we got that going on, and we got this going on. Did I miss anything? I mean, he said it himself, so the writers were completely aware of it, that this movie was crowded with subplots. Uh, you know, you have Sue learn that Surfer is, really is just a scout for Galactus, uh, who's coming, who's a planet eater. He's coming to eat the planet. So... Once Doom gets the board, he betrays the government, he gets the board, he acquires that power. Now, in the comics and cartoons, when Doom acquired this power, he became a worldwide threat. Uh, very imposing, very intimidating. Uh, he became a conqueror. Here, you only have it play out for just a few minutes. That's another thing that hurts this movie, is the lack of action in it. There is a real lack of action and the the boss fight takes place between Doom and the Fantastic Four are essentially a uh, Super Scroll version of Johnny as he swaps all the powers from that 
uh, that was neat in itself, you know, that was sort of like a hint at something that would have probably came, but because this movie failed, it, it didn't. Uh, but you have Johnny take on Dr. Doom with all the powers of the Fantastic Four and uh, beat him relatively quick. And the movie only has an hour and 30 minute runtime, which that hurt the movie itself too when you already have all these subplots crowding the movie and distracting from the overall narrative, the overall main plot. And then you have the final offender, which is that Galactus is essentially just a space cloud. And Silver Surfer is, rel is able to defeat him relatively easy. But that, it just like vanishes. So you have all these things that kind of destroy, just work against the movie. Now, the bad thing is, is none of the comedy in here, none of the comedy felt out of place at all. It's not like a Marvel movie where comedy just feels shoehorned in, in, in very inappropriate places. For instance, like Thor 2, they're making witty comedy with each other, Thor and Loki, shortly after their mothers died and everything's gone to hell. You don't have things in the, you don't have things in a Fantastic Four movie like this. Here, there are a lot of interesting things and like I said, the production quality, it's great. Uh, you get to see the Fantastic Four because they're public celebrities and stuff. They're getting charged by the city for property destruction. That's one thing that Always great about Fantastic Four. Uh, you know, you get to see how they use their powers just very casually in their day-to-day -day lives for all kinds of all kinds of just normal things. They put their powers to good use on a daily basis for casual things, and that's very interesting the way they showcase that here in this movie. But Galactus being a space cloud really really hurt things the runtime of the movie really really hurt things uh doom acquiring the power of the surfer and defeat being defeated so easily that hurt things just now this movie could have really been salvaged relatively easy by not showing galactus and just leaving it on him as, uh, open for a sequel to you know I don't know if they couldn't afford to do Galactus here or not, but if they couldn't, they shouldn't have even tried. But, you know, if that was the real problem, then the best case scenario would have been to not show Galactus at all, to just leave him this mystery, have Silver Surfer go on to try to thwart him. But what I really thought they were going to do, because they introduced Frankie here, and if nobody's familiar with Frankie, Frankie becomes a herald of Galactus. She uh, discovers she has powers similar to... she. In the comics, she becomes Johnny's girlfriend. Uh, and she discovers she has human torch-like powers from uh, an accident that happened when she was a small child. She stumbled in on this experiment that she shouldn't have been walking in on. That she's a military brat, so she was on base. And she had these dormant human torch powers. But in the movie, you know, you don't have to go through all that. In the movie, though, they have this character, Frankie, that, that they just kept, like, putting focus on. You know, they kept hinting at this thing between her and Johnny. And it seemed like she was there for a reason. But it just gets, like, completely dropped, I guess. Uh, I mean, she is there at the end at the wedding when they finally do get married. But... It just seems so strange because, like I said, this movie could have been salvaged by, you know, not showing Galactus. Also, it could have been where you have Frankie offer herself up to become Galactus's new herald because Galactus does need to consume a world or a whole starve and be weak. So I thought that we're going to have her offer up to be Galactus's new herald and she would go on to take Galactus to the planet of the Skrulls, which would lead into the third movie where the Skrulls come and try to 
invade Earth, and the Fantastic Four find out because it's Galactus is going to consume their planet, and <laughs> all that could have been really interesting, and you could have fleshed out this movie if your intention was to make Doom essentially the physical threat in this movie, then then you should have fleshed it out about 30 minutes more at least, and you have him where he he really does some damage and really takes over and becomes a real threat that that they have to rise up and defeat. Um, I think that so much focus, they shouldn't have put so, so much focus on the wedding. They could have skipped over the wedding entirely. All the wedding stuff, you could have said they got married between films. Uh, that could have solved the bit, freed up a big chunk of storyline. Uh, the power swapping, you know, it was really unnecessary, especially because you want to introduce Super Scroll later on. So you don't want to do this with Johnny and just derail that for the future. So the power swapping thing, that that should have not been a thing at all in this movie. Uh, that's one thing I would have not, even though it brought up some interesting humor, and I, I wouldn't have done that. I would have completely neglected the power swapping thing, not had it included. I would have had Frankie step up to become the new herald for Galactus, and <clears throat> you could that would have freed up a lot of time for the Doom stuff, where you had them take on Doom. He acquires the Surfer's Board, and becomes a real threat. Or you could have done something completely different here. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be, be Doom again. The end of the movie hints that, you know, Mole Man's coming into play. So you could have done something with Mole Man instead of Doom. But I think, ultimately, if you just drop the wedding thing, you say that they got married in between films. You know, you have that wrapped up right there. You don't do the power swapping thing. You have... Silver Surfer, Assault Doom, which heals Doom and brings him back to normal. You have them work with the government to try to bring down the Surfer. And then they discover that, you know, the Surfer works for Galactus. And then you have Galactus come. The Surfer try to stop him, but can't. The Fantastic Four try to stop him, but can't. And Frankie offers herself up to spare their world in exchange and uh you could have cramped you see if you would have done it without all the wedding stuff it would have been simple fantastic four works with the government to stop whatever this guy is silver surfer once they have him captured and apprehended you know due to what he was saying ends up with the fantastic four apprehended and the government working with doom because Doom was the one who actually helped them, whereas the Fantastic Four wanted to defend the Surfer to find out more. So then you have Doom acquire the board, and then you have a majority of the movie them fighting Doom while Galactus is slowly on his way, and Doom, you know, conquers a big chunk of the world or whatever, and then. They solved the Doom problem, but it's too late. Galactus is here. He's came. He's here, and Silver Surfer is, and the Fantastic Four are trying to fight him, but they can't stop him. He needs to consume a planet. Frankie offers herself up as the new Herald to go get him a world, and that would lead into a third movie with the Skrulls, and you could have Super Skrull there attack the Fantastic Four and then fight the Scrolls and all that. But, you know, it didn't play out that way. It's really unfortunate because I thought this, you know, I thought this was one of the better franchises. Most people don't. Most people rag on it. They don't like it. Uh, but I really thought this was one of the better franchises. They had the family dynamic downright. They had, you know, the personalities downright. They had quality budget silver surfer was absolutely amazing in this movie it's a shame it really is a shame and i did like the doctor doom 
uh, I felt like though with those powers, Doom, Doom would not be, uh, not have been so easy to take down. Doom's not easy to take down even without those powers. So they really dropped the ball. They they ran through this movie too fast, too many subplots. It really hurt the narrative. They had Frankie in there kind of for no reason. It's just and Galactus being a space cloud. So they really dropped the ball. But the production value was good, you know, the acting was good, Silver Surfer was great, uh, Family Dynamic, like I said, was great, uh, Doom, that was good, just not put to good use, all the actors in here were great, it was cool that they included Frankie, but it sucked they didn't do anything with her, and, uh, they did have the, uh, sort of, what's that? Quinjet or, or the Quin car, or whatever the hell I can't remember what that thing's called, but they did a pretty great job. But they just really dropped the ball. So I'm, I mean, I have to give this movie just. I might give it a five because I really thought the Silver Surfer was done great and everything else was done great. It's just the movie really dropped the ball pretty heavily. So I'm just. I'm just gonna give it. Well, actually, I'm 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 gonna give it a four. I, even though I really like the Silver Surfer and I really like the family dynamic and all that, I have to give it a four because it dropped the ball so hard. It could have done a lot better. Really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Uh, in this derail, what could have been the rest of the franchise? You know, you could have had four Fantastic Four movies, uh, a franchise of four movies. You could have had them. With the Galactus problem here, the Scroll problem in the next one, and uh, then the fourth problem. Uh, I don't know. You could have done four solid movies, though. <laughs> four solid movies. There's a lot of interesting Fantastic Four stories that could have played out, and this kind of killed it for all of them. So I'm going to give this movie four out of ten, even though I really do like a lot of the production values and the Silver Surfer, and all that good stuff. I like all that a lot. Well, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. But they just really dropped the ball. It's messy. It's a mess. Um, it's tragic. So, you know, I'll give... I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Screw it. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, tell me uh, oh, what you least liked about this movie or what you actually liked about this movie I know a lot of people don't like this movie at all um, but it does have good stuff in it you gotta admit Silver Surfer is awesome in here Lawrence Fishburne awesome great voice uh, but like subscribe comment uh, I'm not monetized check out my PayPal me link if you want to support my channel um, Anything helps, uh, but thanks for viewing. Stay awesome. Rock on.